my most recent nonfiction book is something called uh, Legal Systems Very Different from Ours, in which I, that came, it came out of the fact that a long time ago, I got interested in the legal system of Saga period Iceland, of Iceland about a thousand years ago, uh, because there was a controversy between a couple of prominent law and econ people at University of Chicago Law School and a couple of prominent economists at the University of Chicago Economics Department uh, over the idea of essentially replacing our criminal law enforcement system with what you could think of as either a bounty system or something like a tort system. That the argument was, the way I put the argument, this is by Becker and Stigler, is that uh, I'm, a, I'm a cop, you're, you're a criminal, and I got the goods on you. I've got the evidence that'll send you to jail. And from your standpoint, going to jail is the equivalent to a $100,000 fine. And from my standpoint, getting you sent to jail will be a gold star on my report card. And it'll raise my lifetime income by $10,000 because I'll be a slightly better cop. Well, we know from Dragnet what happens. I take the evidence from the prosecutor, you go to jail. We know from economics what happens. Markets exist to move assets to their highest valued use. And the evidence to get you convicted is worth $10,000 to me and $100,000 to you. So you buy it from me for $50,000. Doesn't work very well. So the system is not incentive compatible. And that means that to make the system work, you need a second level of cops over the first level, watching the first level to make sure they don't take bribes sometimes successfully and sometimes unsuccessfully. And then you got somebody watching the second layer and so forth. And so what Becker and Stigler said was, how about instead, we don't pay the cop a, a salary. When I turn you in for a $100,000 punishment, I get the $100,000. It's easy as if you imagine it's just a fine, but you could do it with a jail sentence and then the government pays me instead of a salary, an amount of money corresponding to that jail sentence. Uh, and Landis and Posner, who were two prominent people at the law school, pointed out among other things that they were really reinventing the tort system. Because in tort law, I, the, vic the, the, the victim of a tort, sue you. And when you are convicted, I get the money. And more complicated, but sort of. So I got interested in that. And it turned out that there was a real world system I had come across in which if you killed somebody's relative, sued you. And that was Saga period Iceland. It was a society where there was a system of courts. There was a legislature and a system of laws but there was no law enforcement or at least no state law enforcement, it was all private. So I got interested in that and wrote a, what I thought was quite an interesting article that people still read about how that system worked and learned a bunch of interesting stuff. And then I was lazy for a long time. And then I got interested in the legal system of England in the 18th century. And I originally got interested in that for what turned out to be an irrelevant reason. And the reason is that Becker had an old article in which he had argued that it looked as though Suppose I'm the punishment for some crime is that we catch half the criminals and we find them $1,000. Well, Becker said, we could get just as much deterrence if we caught a quarter of the criminals and find them $2,000 or an eighth and find them $4,000. Well, doesn't that imply that the ideal system has an infinite punishment or an infinitesimal probability? You keep on making it less likely and higher. And he tried to, had an answer that I think was the wrong answer in my view, to why that wasn't the case. But it occurred to me that there was a legal system I'd heard about that looked as though it did that. Because the 18th century criminal law system was what was referred to as the bloody code, because essentially all serious offenses were capital. So I was interested in that. Now it turned out it wasn't true that all serious offenses were capital on paper. But if you looked at really what really happened, it turned out that if you were charged with one of those capital offenses, your chance of actually hanging was about one in eight. And if, you're, if you were convicted, your chance was maybe 40%. So that in fact, on paper, it was all capital, but actually other things happened. So I got intrigued in how that system worked. But it turned out that what was interesting about the system was a system of privately enforced criminal law because England did not have police until the 19th century. And that what happened in that system was that if somebody stole your horse, it was up to you to find that I who stole the horse, to bring the evidence to court, to get him convicted. And unlike a tort case, you didn't collect any money. So why did anybody bother? So that was an interesting puzzle. And so I ended up writing what I thought was a very interesting article trying to make sense of that system. And then I was lazy again for a long time. 
And then it occurred to me that both of these articles had really been fun and I'd learned a lot of neat stuff from them. So I ought to do more of that. And then the problem is how do I commit myself to do work? So the answer is that I announced that I was teaching a seminar the next year in the law school on legal systems very different from ours. I had two already and now I had to research a bunch more. So I taught that seminar every other year for, I don't know, 10 or 12 years, and then used the material I'd put together for that to turn it into a book. Uh, and that was fun. 